Hello everyone, Reza here. Welcome to another lighting video. In this video, you're going to learn how to create a volumetric light or God rays using Arnold inside Autodesk Maya. All right, let's get to the scene really quick. I've got a, a, a very simple scene, so basically a ceiling. Um, I've got a few bars and there are a bunch of cubes and a confined environment. I've got this little statue right here, not essential to the scene. Uh, so if you don't have it, you can still follow along and practice. In case if you are interested in that model, it's a free model that I downloaded done by Mr. Oliver Larick. I put the link in the description so you can kind of download this model and put it inside this scene. As for this scene, of course, if you're a member of my Patreon page, you can also download this room and get the statue separately, combine them together so you can follow along. If you've been following my lighting tutorials you know that I would like to start with GPU rendering and once my blockout is done switch to CPU rendering for final product so with that said I'm gonna switch to rendering menu set I'm gonna go to light render settings and in system I switch to GPU then having a look at my Arnold render setup AA camera sample of 3 is fine um, I can enable adaptive sampling and set that to something like 0.1 so I don't need to wait for too long and that should give me a good starting point I'm gonna go to Arnold bring the render view over here I can probably attach that somewhere here moving the outliner down and create a half half layout so I have access to my outliner window I have access to my camera and of course I can see what's going on in here now if I play there is not much can be seen because as the warning indicates there is no light in the scene I'm gonna switch to perspective and by the way this scene is almost three meters long so it's a massive scene I tend to really aim for real measurements especially when it comes to lights and dynamics you really need to think about scene size if you model in cm and try to light it chances are you may not get realistic result we are ready to go to create our light now when it comes to god rays or volumetric lighting um, and this is just my approach, by no mean the way to go. I tend not to use Arnold lights and go with native lights instead. So I'm going to go to create light and use a spotlight. Now spotlights in Maya are fantastic. They're cones of lights from a position of the light towards the point that it's pointing at. So it's more like a torch. I'm going to move this up with the W key on my keyboard. As you can see, it's tiny. So, I don't know, maybe 120, um, maybe bigger. Yeah, something like that will do. Maybe need to increase this higher to something like six. I need to rotate it is in minus 90, so it's pointing downward. Now, still not seeing much. Obviously, the scene is massive and we've got default settings, so obviously we cannot see anything. I tend to work with exposure with any type of lights. So I leave intensity alone, go to Arnold tab, expand it, and I have access to exposure. Now, because this scene is big, three meters by probably five meters, I need a high value. So let's see what value works for us. I'm gonna start with 10, still nothing, 15, something is turning up, which is a good sign, 18, there you go, 
19 and maybe 20 can be a good starting point. I'm actually gonna go 21 and that gives me a good result. Just so you know, what I have on the walls is just a default AI standard surface, a weight set to nine. You can go all the way to one for the weight, um, but you just get more bounce lights. I think point nine will be much better. As for the statue itself, um, it's just a normal, again, AI standard with a little bit of metalness. So I get a little bit of highlights in there and that is it, really. There is no map, nothing else. Um, I tend to work with AI standards since I'm using Arnold. Now, to see things more clearly, because I'm getting awful amount of noise here, um, I'm gonna really quickly bring in the uh, one of the denoisers. It's all good to go. What I'm getting is going to be hopefully clean. Perfect. And again, if you are not sure what I just did, definitely check my denoising with optics in Arnold. And that gives you a really good overview on how to enable your denoiser without adding too much to your render time. All right, I'm uh, ready to go. Looking at this, um, I believe the exposure looks right. Now, a few things you need to be mindful of in here in the spotlight attribute. We've got samples. I tend to increase the sample to help the denoiser to do a better job. Probably at this point, we really don't need adaptive sampling. So I can actually turn off adaptive sampling and see how clean the scene is. Uh, gotta love optics. So um, if I scroll up, we have a cone light and that cone light actually changes the diameter, how small and big the cone is. And we have penumbra, which controls the softness of the area. So if I kind of zoom in, you can see how penumbra is actually taking effect or having an impact and drop off actually it creates a fall off where you have centric point of light and as you move towards the edges it gets softer and softer maybe i use a little bit of um, drop off in there so it's not as bright as the center um, that should really do the trick for me and maybe for the light itself, I'm gonna give it just a little bit of temperature. Obviously, I'm not gonna go crazy. Something like that should do the trick. So it's not just white. Gives it a little bit of a, a personality or characteristic. Always think about the story behind the scene and how it looks. All right, now the scene is set up. I'm pretty much good to go. One thing that I can do to improve this situation is just to tad move the camera back so that there is not gonna be any cutoff in the shadows. That's much better. I'm gonna lock and let's see how we can add atmospheric effect to this light. Now it's time to set up our atmospheric shader and assign it to our spotlight. So select your spotlight, make sure you're in rendering menu set, go to render and render settings. We would like to go to Arnold renderer tab and scroll all the way down until you get to environment. Click on the environment and then we have atmosphere and background, which is legacy. We go to atmosphere look at this checkerboard if i left click on it we have a number of shaders that i previously used and these shaders are now available for us to use we have ai fog ai standard volume and ai atmosphere volume as the name suggests that's exactly what we want so i'm going to go click on this atmosphere and i can close this window and nothing happens and the reason that nothing happens is because if you look at the right hand side and I'm going to name this volumetric shader so we know what we're dealing with, this volumetric shader doesn't have any density. So the density is off. Now the first reaction for students is just to go to and put one in there and bam, the whole scene is white. 
what you need to start with is a very, very, very low value, something like 0 0.001. And if I press enter, there we have it. Beautiful atmospheric light coming through a god rays. Uh, and now it's up to you how you want to tweak this. Um, attenuation controls the scattering. If it's set to zero, it scatters across the scene. Of course, as you dial it, it gets less and less visible to the point that you probably cannot see it much. But all in all, if the uh, attenuation is set to one, you're probably not going to see much. The travel distance is not as much, whereas if it's set to zero, everything is clearer. I tend to leave the attenuation to zero and tweak my lights with other tools. And of course, samples is um, in charge of the uh, n amount of noise in the density value. So it's basically the quality for your density. If you see a lot of noise in your density, then feel free to use samples. I am actually going to reduce it to one because optics is doing an amazing job and uh, I really don't need to crank up any samples here. Um, optics is just pretty much removing all the noise from my scene. Now, the only thing I probably need to change is this color right here. And again, uh, this is a totally optional choice. Um, this is, I think it just tells a better story if we have um, a, a light like that. Now I'm going to give myself more density, something like 0.4. Now you can see more lights are coming through and the result looks much better. Now a question I get a lot is how we can control this fall off. The attenuation will have an impact on the entire light itself and it's not going to give me a range. For example, what if I want this light to come in, but the impact on the ground, I don't want that to be as harsh. Now, effects like this can be controlled using light filters, which is a decay rate that we have on each light. Now, don't confuse this with the actual decay rate in here. This doesn't give you much. I can change this and it has no impact. It works when you have Maya software or Maya hardware, but with Arnold, it's not as responsive. For Arnold, you actually need to use Arnold rollout and you actually need to scroll down to go to light filters. If I click on add i have a list of filters one of them is light decay so i'm gonna go add and it creates this light decay it doesn't give me any option here but it gives me a tab on the attribute editor to work with so i'm gonna click on that we've got near attenuation and far attenuation. Now we have control over regions of the attenuation or our fall off rather than just one slider for the whole thing. Now near attenuation is where it starts the light, which I really don't want. So I'm not going to turn it on. I need far attenuation. Now when you enable far attenuation, then it considers there is no far end because the far end is set to zero. What I can do is to bring the far end and slightly dial it back. Look at that. Now that creates a lot of artistic choices for you if you would like to um, kind of play around with the effect and get the more realistic result. Um, this option is definitely available to you. I can go in here, scroll up, even increase the amount of exposure that I have to get a stronger light and to get a more realistic fall off. Now, this is actually um, what I would like to see for the light to travel. And as it travels, it loses energy. And that's what we see in real life. 
we have some extra controls under visibility on our light under Arnold rollout let's explore those as well you can control the diffuse so if you would like to just keep the specularity you can turn off the diffuse and all you see is just the specularity very cool you can bring the diffuse back and turn off specularity instead so now all you see is just color information and diffuse and there is no highlights in the scene um, same thing happens with uh, surface scattering and and of course same thing happens with your indirect lights and the volume light as well so that's another way of controlling the opacity of your volume light so if you want to make it almost transparent you can you can actually keyframe this so you can actually right click on this and keyframe this and create a very interesting effect where the light appears so all sorts of creative decisions you can make based on the attributes that is available to you in Arnold rollout on every single light all right, this is it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. I hope you use it in your projects. Let me know in the description below how you go and how you used this technique in your own projects. Again, this room is available on my Patreon. So if you member, jump in, download the scene and follow along. And I put the link in the description so you could download this statue separately as well and continue with this tutorial. Thank you very much, stay safe, and talk to you soon.